These Canon PTZ cameras are fantastic, but the controllers are just as expensive as the cameras. In this video, I wanna look at the possibility of using an Elgato Stream Deck with BitFocus Companion to control these cameras. And then you're gonna to wanna to stick around to see my two methods of setting up the Stream Deck for controlling these cameras. Also, I'm gonna share my thoughts after using the Stream Deck alongside the Canon IP100 and 1000 PTZ controllers. So you're gonna to wanna to know how these controllers compare. If you're not familiar, this is a Stream Deck XL. Each unit has 32 buttons arranged in a four by eight configuration. It connects to a computer via USB-C and is basically a glorified keyboard. Glorified because each button or key can be programmed to do virtually any imaginable action. And each button has a display that is 72 by 72 pixels. Text images can be displayed on the buttons, making Stream Decks a fantastic tool and perfect for controlling these cameras. Hi everybody, my name is Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs and I train and educate leaders to do church and event production with excellence. I've been working with these Canon PTZ cameras and they are just amazing. If you're looking for a pan tilt zoom camera that really works, by that I mean the controllability is smooth, you can pan, tilt like a real camera run by a real person, heard of those? You should seriously consider these Canon cameras. So this is the Canon CRN500 PTZ pan tilt zoom camera. This N500 is fantastic and a bit of an upgrade to its brothers, the Canon CRN100 that has a one 2.3 sensor but no SDI output. The CRN300 also has the one 2.3 sensor but does have the SDI output. The N500 has a one inch sensor that is a bit of an upgrade and helps the camera be a better value in low light. A brighter image means the autofocus is gonna work better, the camera image is gonna look better, and it's just gonna be a better camera all around. When building a camera system, we start with one, two, three, four cameras, and then a controller or two. The price adds up the larger the system, but the best part and sometimes most challenging part of leading a ministry in a church is that when we spend money, we're directly spending the hard earned money of the people of the congregation. This is usually the people who are the most invested into our church, into our ministries. And it's important to be a good steward of what the church has as we seek to reach our community with the life-changing good news of Jesus. A part of being a good steward is asking, do we really need the $2,000 controller? Do we really need the $5,000 controller to run our new cameras? I think the answer might be yes. And there also could be some circumstances where you want to buy the better camera or a second camera so you can buy the controller during round two. To clarify, you can go check out my other video on these cameras and me talking about why I'm gonna recommend purchasing the N500s for my church. I highly recommend the N500s over the 300s because of the improved sensor. So let's get back to this controller question. The Elgato Stream Deck and BitFocus Companion, this is what I want to propose that we use to control our PTZ cameras, saving lots of money. <laughs> so let's see what we can do with the Stream Deck and find out if this savings is actually worth it. Go ahead and watch my video on controlling the CRN cameras from the computer app or the web page. You can do all of the functionality from there. You just don't have any physical buttons, which is really a big bummer, especially the joystick, because it's not just a joystick. It doesn't just go left and right. It moves left and then you go hard left and it goes really fast left. So it's sensitive to how far you push in each direction. And if this is your first time using Stream Deck, it would be valuable for you to know that Stream Deck has software called Stream Deck on their website. You can go to elgato.com, click on the downloads page, then click on Stream Deck. And as of October 2024, we are on version 6.7.3. ProPresenter has a native module for this if you are a ProPresenter user, but ultimately this is a simpler version of BitFocus Companion, which is what we're gonna utilize in this video and focus on here. But you can control some stuff. I'm not sure if these cameras are controllable from the regular software, but BitFocus can do like everything. Now that you're not gonna be confused when you see this software on other YouTube videos talking about the Stream Deck. Go ahead to the BitFocus website, create an account, download the software, and go ahead and install that software and connect your Stream Deck to the computer via USB-C. And if you don't have a Stream Deck yet, don't worry. You can click the buttons to test them or you can hold and push the button which will allow you to do it from the computer without actually having a button controller connected. 
Companion is a software that runs kind of in the background. It runs out of the browser. So when the BitFocus window opens, click Launch GUI, which stands for Graphical User Interface. And if that does not pop up, go to the toolbar in the top and click on the Companion logo, then click Launch GUI, and the web interface will load. On the Connections tab, once the page loads, we're gonna search Canon and select the PTZ camera preset. Give this camera a unique name or label as it's called, then input the camera's IP address and select the camera model, then save the settings at the bottom of this screen. If you have questions about how to set these cameras up to the network, go check out my video on that as well. You're going to do this for each Canon camera that you wanna to connect to the system to control from this stream deck. And you can control as many as you want. I don't think there's a limit. There is a limit on the IP100 controller, which is 100 cameras, and then there's a 200 camera limit on the 1000 controller. Now we're gonna go ahead and click on the buttons tab and begin adding buttons and designing the controller layout to control these cameras. To begin, select an empty space and click create button. And with a button created, the right side of the screen, this is where all of our settings and options are for the newly created button. The idea here is that when you click the button, it performs the action and there's also a button up action. So when you press down, it does this and then when it, you let up, it does this. You can also do some cool stuff like adding steps to the buttons and so much to learn about Bitfocus Companion, but I think you're gonna pick up on quite a bit of it in this video. If you do not see the new button come up on the connected Stream Deck controller, then go to the Surfaces tab and click Rescan USB. Once you rescan your USB, assuming that it's found a Stream Deck device, you'll see the type here. Mine is an XL. It's plugged in and mine is connected locally. It could also be connected through Companion Satellite. I'll click settings and now I can see what page it's on. If this use last page at startup is selected, go ahead and uncheck that. If you want, we can set the start page specifically. I wanna make sure that it's on a page that I can actually access. If it's on a page without a button allowing you to go to another page, then you will be stranded. Setting up navigation on Stream Deck is super simple, but when you first start, this can be super frustrating. But we can always change the current page for each Stream Deck device right here. I can change the horizontal and vertical grid. I can also adjust the brightness on this particular Stream Deck. And if this Stream Deck needed to be mounted upside down, for example, I can adjust the button rotation. This Stream Deck XL has 32 buttons like we talked about, but we can take advantage of more than one page. Specifically, 99 pages can be set up on one instance of Companion. The satellite application can run on remote computers to point devices back to the main Companion setup. And go check out my video on Companion Saddle. It's a really cool feature. The more control you want, the more pages you're gonna need to utilize. I have two setups that I wanna share with you in this video to control these cameras from the Stream Deck. For our first example setup, one way I have found to utilize the Stream Deck is to save and recall presets. Even if you have one of the Canon IP controllers, I would recommend using the Stream Deck to save and recall camera presets. This is something that we even do right now at my church with our PTZ Optic cameras to really give us a ton of functionality. So if you're interested in that, go check out that video. How I have this set up is on the first column of the Stream Deck XL, we have cameras one, two, three, and four labeled. And then each row can be used to recall presets one through eight from left to right on each camera. This only gives you four cameras on a page, but again, use this how it works for you. Adding a unique name to each button allows the preset to have a known purpose, not just a number that needs to be referenced from an external sheet telling the operator what the preset position is. These presets are stored on the camera, so any controller can access any created preset. I'm going to go to page two in Companion and create a new button, then add an action to this button. It's gonna be internal surface set to page. In this case, I'm gonna set the page to three, which is the next page. Now I'm gonna Command C to copy this new button, and then I wanna go over to this next page, number three, where I Command V to paste this button, and I'm gonna change the go to page from three to two. 
page two will now be the recall presets page and page three will be used to save presets. So now I can use this button on either page to go back and forth between pages two and pages three. And I can copy and paste this button or use the move tool to move it around to any of the buttons on either of these pages. Well, I'm just gonna jump ahead a little bit. I've gone through and set up all of the buttons that we're gonna need here. So Podium, for example, I can go through and I can see that there is a recall preset number two on this. So I'm doing this one, two, three, four, all the way over to eight. Uh, I also have moved the recall presets button to the bottom right of the pages. So page two and page three are virtually the same but I've got this button here so we can go back and forth between them. Camera one, I'm either gonna set this as a recall preset or a save preset for a wide angle shot on preset one, or I'm gonna use it to cut to that camera on the ATEM switcher. So I've started the second button as recall preset two and on the second page, save preset two. So it's very simple, click on the button, go to the press action, click on the red folder, and then go to the camera you want to set up the action for, scroll all the way down to preset, and then on this page is two, so it's gonna be recall by number. And now once we've added that, we can now set the number we wanna recall it from. In this case, it's gonna be number two. So when this button gets pushed, the camera will go ahead and move to that position. This is the simplest form of Stream Deck control, but already this has become very useful. And even if you buy these really fancy, nice cameras, you can still use this and it's super useful. Presets are super important, but if you want to have full control of the camera from the Stream Deck, then we need to set up a ton more stuff. Let's start with thinking about our page structure. My first page will be called Master Page, and it will be the landing page to select each camera. I'll make a new button, name it Cam1, and going back to that previously used technique, I'm gonna add an action internal surface set to page. The destination page here will be four. The goal with page one is that each button press simply takes us to another page that has specific camera control functions on it. Here is the map that I have created, and this shows what pages I'd like things to be linked to. Pages two and three are already set up to recall presets and save presets. With this four camera setup, it might make a lot more sense to just set the first column of buttons, camera one, two, three, and four, to be the trigger buttons that take us to the camera specific pages, then use the rest of the page to recall and save presets. Pushing the camera one button takes us to page four, and this page is designed to be the basic camera control page where we will be able to pan and tilt the camera as well as zoom in and zoom out and adjust the camera's exposure up and down. There will also be some presets here. If you look through these actions available to these cameras, you're gonna realize there are a ton of camera control options. I have been super impressed with these Canon PTZ cameras. They are a little more expensive than their counterparts, the XA65, XA75, and XF605, but the remote control is fantastic. You might not need the remote pan and tilt, but the remote exposure, white balance, and other color settings are the best. I had been using the RC IP1000 controller for a little bit, and then I got my hands on the cheaper IP100 controller. The 100 controller is not amazing. It's noticeably $2,000, where the 1000 controller is $5,000. It definitely lacks a lot of the buttons, but then the quality of those buttons are also not as good. I've been using Stream Deck alongside both controllers, and those extra controls are fantastic. Lots of the buttons that are missing from the 100 controller can be replaced with the Stream Deck. On the IP100, I missed the ability to see the thumbnail of the preset positions, and then there's no room to even label the presets. Stream Deck's come in great there, and you can use what we talked about in this video to easily create buttons with names. You also have to be on the main menu to select specific cameras. So if you're adjusting color or exposure on a specific camera, you can't select a different camera without going back out of the menu. The Canon RC IP100 is a fine controller paired with the Stream Deck as long as you understand these limitations. I recommend buying the RC IP1000 controller as a primary controller or to manage the color grading of the cameras. You can then give secondary users the cheaper controllers to PTZ the cameras. And to wrap this video, I would only use the Stream Deck to 100% control the camera if you were exclusively using presets. 
but the Stream Deck is a great stepping stone to in the future purchasing one of the controllers. I know that was a ton of information. I hope you enjoyed this masterclass on BitFocus Companion and Stream Deck controlling the Canon PTZ cameras. Subscribe to my channel and follow for future videos. If you'd like to talk about a future project, then send me an email. I offer Zoom training sessions on these topics and others. Schedule a time on my calendar at crazyamazingdesigns.com slash training. If you'd like assistance with your PTZ camera installation or to talk about future events you'd like to have live streamed, send me an email at crazyamazingnathan at gmail.com. Thanks so much. See you next time. Bye.